I came to London in 1959, I remember that. And the place I wanted to see plays was the Royal Court. And the place I wanted to work in once I started training was the Royal Court. I can remember years and years later when I was casting a play with Lisa um, Macon, who cast all the plays I did here by and large, I can remember thinking, gosh, if I had known that I was going to be actually sitting here casting plays, it would have made life much less stressful. <laughs> so I, I was a freelance director at the Royal Court. I think maybe one of the first plays that Max brought in was A Holy Healthy Glasgow, which I had done in the Royal Exchange and in the Edinburgh Festival. I think that was one of the first. So I did some plays as a freelance, and then under Ian Rickson, I was offered an associate directorship. So, and also, I got a bit of a shock today. I read a notice downstairs which said, food deliveries to the Wilson studio. And I had forgotten, uh, in all my huge modesty, that I had a room named after me. I also, as I looked up and saw the lovely old sign the Royal Court, I put my, is it your handprint at the topping of the building, or is it your footprint? Some print. Some print. Some I, part of your I went up to the top for the topping of the new building. So I'm all over the place. Uh, <laughs> I remember the beginning of Serious Money. I, I thought, oh, God, this is wonderful. But the thing that really sticks in my brain is my dinner with André, which was not a play, but it was a discussion. It was André Gregory and Wally Sean upstairs uh, talking, and Alan Rickman and I went to see it, and we we sat up most of the night talking about it. It was just life-changing. What, what were they talking about? In what way was it? They were talking about life and theatre, and it was just, I mean, they made a film of it eventually. Um, but that wasn't a Royal Court production as such, that was a, uh, but I, I always remember that. And of course, if we have other memories that stick out was the first night of Operation Bad Apple, which I was in, um, because I was a big, big fan of Gordon Newman, and I wrote to Max and said, by any chance, if there's a small part, of any, I'll do anything for Gordon Newman. And I played the police commissioner. And it, uh, the evening, there were threatening litigation and all sorts of things. The theatre was packed with lawyers. And then Max, on the, on the opening night, Max said, I think it would be a good idea to leave the house lights on. <laughs> Which, of course, just I, buttock clenching time. <laughs> It was um, absolutely, mm. um, and here was this theatre, and I had to just walk on and start talking. I still shiver at the thought. <laughs> the Royal Court, in the, when I first became associated, there were very few other theatres doing new writing then. Now, fortunately, thanks to the Royal Court, by and large, there are a lot more people doing new writing. But... Um, the Royal Court was just the place to be, as far as I was concerned. You know, I couldn't think of any other theatre I wanted to work in, really. And it took a while <laughs> before I got there. But, um, it, you know, the, I, the, 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 the whole ethos of new writing in the court, the writer is, the, the text is the important thing. And I can remember when I was an associate director, we had the grid. Does the grid still exist? Oh, yes, yes. And the grid meetings were wonderful, where we all discussed the plays we had all read. And I remember it was very nerve-wracking uh, to go first in the grid. If, you know, when we were going to talk about a play, I would say, well, start with you, Richard. <laughs> I always prepared to go second or third. Um, so you had to be the first to say. And we had some fascinating meetings in. And uh, they, t they take care of the writers, and that's what they should do. That's what should happen. If the Royal Court didn't exist, new writing in this country would be in a sorry state.